All right, what is up, guys? Welcome to the Diamond Hands Trading Channel. My name is Barney XBT. Today, I'm going to be going into what is a swing failure pattern, or what is also known as an SFP. Now, it's probably for anyone new here. If you're ever on Discord or you know trading groups, and you see people all SFP on the two hour, whatever, and you have no idea what they're talking about, and you feel like an idiot to even ask them what that means, this video is for you. Okay, so I'm gonna hop right into it. I'm gonna first go into what a swing is and then how you can actually trade a swing failure pattern. All right, so let's hop right into it. First off, we need to go into what is a swing? Well, that depends on what market you're looking at. If you're looking at a bullish price action, you always wanna see price continuing to go higher. It makes a higher high, like we see here. Comes up, makes a higher high slight retrace and then makes a higher low so what do i mean by that so price started down here came up found some resistance around this area right so that's your first swing you could go short there um you know or compound your long and then you get a slight pullback but it's a higher low so that's another one and then it goes higher so the swing here is when we actually make another higher high and we close above that. So that is a swing completed, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So that's bullish price action. We made our first higher high, higher low, and then another higher high. So price closed, strong close above this previous, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now for bearish market structure. So if you're in a bear market and price is coming down, it'll first make that lower low right price rejects going any lower from this point and we get a slight pump or pull retracement back up another one here but this time we get a lower high right so we had that original high up there we couldn't even quite make it so that's your lower high lower low and then we get another push downwards past below this previous lower low and it closes back down here so that's another lower low all right so now that price action is in what a bearish market structure swing would look like when it's completed so hopefully that makes sense right. and this will so help. now that we have a brief understanding of what a swing is now we can go into the literary definition of what a swing failure pattern is all right so here we go. The swing failure pattern is a liquidity engineering pattern generally used to fill large orders. This means the SFP generally occurs when larger players push the price into liquidity pockets with the sole objective of filling their own positions. When liquidity is limited, sellers must engineer buying pressure for them to sell to fill their sell orders or the other way around. If you're in bullish market structure, they want to fill their buys. Um, an easy way to do this is by triggering stop losses. Now, that's very important to know, and we'll go into that. As you might know, stop losses generally reside around swing points, whether that be swing highs or swing lows, longs, shorts, etc. The swing failure pattern is an important indication of a trend reversal as it signals when the current market trend weakens and a new trend starts to emerge. A swing failure occurs when the current price trend fails to reach a new high in an uptrend or meet the lowest low in a downtrend. Now that's the most, uh, that's the best way to describe it in one sentence. And now I'm gonna go into the diagram and show you what that kind of looks like. So first off, we've got two market trends here. Here's the bearish swing example. We came up, we couldn't, we made a lower high ended up making a lower low. So if in this case, we can see it's a bearish SFP. You wanna be going short right around here. When we break this level, having a stop loss above a wick of a high here, and you'd be targeting the structure break down here. So I'm gonna go back to the whiteboard and draw this out myself, but I just wanted to show these two diagrams first. Second, we got the bullish failure swing, you know, Price is making lower highs, lower lows, continuing. We have that swing point right here. Comes up, ends up making a higher high. 
comes back down. The low was not exceeded, resulting in a failure swing. We could not take out that low. Now, usually what you'll see is it comes down wicks below this, right? So price came below this low, but it ended up pumping all the way back up and then closing above the level. That's what an SFP really looks like, in my opinion. And you know, then you come up here, so you'll place your buy orders right here, you know, to have full confirmation, having your stop loss now below this low, now that we've seen that it couldn't make it below it, and watch price reverse. I have an actual example I've pulled up here. Um, this is Bitcoin, looking at the four hour. Um, this is an old chart, but it shows the bearish SFP. I want to show you how we set that, right? So let's say when you were right around here, guys wanted to start going short in this area. They were calling to take out this low, right? So they were going to put their stop losses above this wick, right? So that's where their stop loss liquidity is. So it pumps, you know, dumps all the way down their right, comes all the way back up. Maybe they did not take profit. Here we go. So now this is an example of an SFP. Price briefly trades above the stop loss area. Shorts are forced to close, resulting in buying pressure. Right? So, guys, or bulls who are wanting to fill their own shorts are pushing price, forcing the guys that had, you know, went short here, who had their stop losses around this area. They push price into it where it triggers either their stop losses, maybe it liquidates them, you know, so it's forced buying pressure in order to fill their own sell orders, their own shorts. And then price pumps back down, or dumps back down, I'm sorry, and ends up closing below the high, right? So let's see what we say here. Other players use this buying pressure to fill their own shorts, like I just said. Sometimes the high is swept again to engineer more liquidity. Once enough shorts are filled, the push down begins. Then we can see what happened here, right? So all this whole pump was engineered by large players in the market. They pushed the price up in order to fill their own shorts and make these guys close. So it's really PVP. Um, you know, it, they need to engineer liquidity into their own shorts. No one's really wanting to buy up here, so they need to force these guys to close their shorts and buy, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Next we have the bullish SFP example, right? So, whoops. So we got price coming down here. Here's our swing low, right around 30K, right? Comes back up another swing low so now we got we know maybe these guys have their stop losses below here who had went long in this area these guys who went long in this area have their stop losses below here and you know that's just an obvious place where many longs will likely have their stop losses in place so it is really just a mind game so if you were to go long then you know the most normal thing you would think to do be to place your stop loss below the previous wick because if it did go below there then that would be a break in market structure and your bullish thesis to be long in the first place would be invalidated right so that's why these SFPs happen you know they are forced to make you think that price is going to go below and you'll trigger stop loss or if you're over leveraged it'll just liquidate you so it's you know, it's, again, like I said, it's PVP. In order for them to fill their own longs, they're going to make you close yours first. And then they'll fill theirs lower when you're, you know, market selling below this low. Right? Okay, so that's our first swing low, swing low. Another one here. So price came down. We had equal lows right around this 31K area. And price immediately pumped back up. And then continued up here, took out this market structure high. This bearish market structure when it closed above this high, if that makes sense. Right? So now here is the big one. Okay. 
So this is what's known as a bullish swing failure pattern. Price briefly trades below the stop loss area. Longs are forced to close, resulting in selling pressure. Other players use this buying pressure to fill their own longs. Once enough longs are filled, the push-up begins. So it's the same thing as the bearish example I just had. So here we have price wicked down below this first swing low, second, or, oh, I'm sorry, we'll, I did that backwards, so third, second, and even the first. So we dumped all the way through here. All of these guys who have been long, however long this took to play out, probably had their stop losses below here, right? So they all get knocked out of their positions. The guys who were wanting to buy lower have now filled it. The ones who were forcing the selling pressure in the first place in order to make these guys close their longs, and then you see it pump all the way back up. Right, so now that we understand what a bearish and a bullish swing failure pattern is, like this is right here signifies the trend reversal, right? And then this continues higher, okay? So now we're gonna go into some primary examples and how to actually trade an SFP. I'm just gonna briefly go over the cycle of an SFP. First, the high or the low is set. It's clearly visible. That's where the stop losses um, are going to be. That we know, you know, whether it's a we're looking at for shorts, the swing high, or if we're looking for longs with the swing low. Price trades above or below that base level or that swing high or swing low for a brief period of time. This is for a stop loss hunt. And that good brings us to number three. Stop losses are triggered. That's when large players in the market are trying to fill their own orders. So when they push, you know, for looking for longs, they push price below that previous swing low in order to trigger those stop losses, which results in an intense selling pressure for a bullish example. And then they'll have their own buy orders back below here. And then when once enough longs or shorts are filled, price Price moves back above or below the marked level. That's the swing failure pattern, right? right. So we're just gonna go back to the diagram for just a moment. I'm gonna go over what it would look like for a bullish SFP and a bearish, right? So again, we got the bullish market structure. We're making higher highs and higher lows, right? Our swing points. This one where it was completed, you know, ended up making a higher high and closed above there. So when I say close, I'm talking about the candlestick. We're usually looking at a higher time frame. Let's just say we're looking at the four hour chart, right? So the four hour closed above this level and it was, you know, confirmed as a swing point. Now let's say when price came back down and then it made its way back up, let's say it only briefly traded above this high and then it ended up wicking all the way back down and then closed like so right so and this is an example of you know bears pushing the price higher intending to trigger all the stop losses that people who had who were short here so they all get triggered it in, creates um, forced buying pressure they will fill their shorts up here and then that's basically what it means so that's an example of a four hour sfp and then your target would be to take out this low so if it came back down you could take profit here right or you could just simply wait and then see if it even takes out this low since it's a reversal pattern right so that's an example of what a bearish sfp would look like now we're looking at the bullish one, so we're, it's the exact opposite, just bearish market structure. We got our swing points, we're making lower lows, lower highs. Let's say this didn't happen, right? So price came down, wicked below this area, but then the candle ended up looking something like that and ended up closing green. That would be an example of a bullish swing failure pattern. So if you want to be aggressive, you could go long either, you know, maybe you went long at this point, 
if you were being aggressive, maybe went long down here trying to knife catch. Very dangerous, much higher risk. Um, the conservative way to go about it is to simply just wait to see where this closes. We know it closed green. Now we have validation, and that was a swing failure pattern, and more confidence. So maybe it gets a slight pullback again to retest this level. You could go long here, or you could just go long here and have your stop loss below this low, right? So that's what I would do. Um, and then intending price to come back up and make a higher high, and then that's a trend reversal. Next, we're gonna look at some examples on an actual chart. I'm gonna bring up, all right, so first off, we're gonna be looking at the 12-hour chart for Litecoin, um, just because it's a really nice one that I, I was able to easily spot. Um, so, Right after the FTX crash we had here in November, price came up, ended up making a higher high. So we had this swing point here, 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 here. And we finally make this high, right? So then price comes back down. This is technically considered an SFP if you look at this. So it went below, it ended up closing here, but then that next one did the same thing, ended up closing above. And then here on Tuesday, November 29th, came back down just to retest it. Ended up pumping green, right? So that one wasn't as clear. The clearest one I see is this high. So we had that really strong candle from $77, taking out this previous high around $83.35, and price briefly traded above ended up closing below. Now it does not matter how low it closes below the high. Um, it could be literally just on it as this example is, or it could be down here, it could be going red. It does not matter. It just, the fact is that it ended up closing below that previous high is what makes it a swing failure pattern indicator. So then that next one comes up also rejects that forced buying pressure triggering the stop losses for those who were short maybe in this area they I'm gonna put my stop here that's where you know this is the liquidity level that makes sense right all the major players in the market the guys you know they're wanting to fill their own shorts but they don't want to fill it here they're gonna create liquidity by making you close your shorts right they're going to pump the price, make you close yours while they're actually filling their own, and then price continues to push down. Right? So, hopefully, that makes sense. They pushed price and liquidity level, filled their own shorts, made you close yours, and then price goes down. Okay, so how would you trade this? I'm going to go over what you need to do um, in a slide in a moment. Let's just go for this example. If you wanted to be aggressive, you could literally just go short at the high. Once it kind of, once you saw this wicking back down again, you could go short right there, and then maybe put your stop loss right above it. Two percent's not that bad. Then for a target, I'd be looking for either this low again, which is this previous high, or if you wanted to be, if you, you know, aggressive, you could have held had your target here right which ended up playing perfectly this would be your target one this would be your target two for take profit and then close trade and as you can see you had these three here this is another example of an sfp if you look at this so price came down ended up making that lower low from that previous market structure right but let's bring up a ray we printed this low here Price came down, reacted again, pumped all the way back up above this previous level. And then finally, this one on Monday, December 19th, you can see price briefly traded below the low. This is a stop loss hunt. You know, they were filling their own longs by triggering the stop losses of those who had been long before them. And then ended up closing above this level again, the $63 level. And then price continued to go up so that's the cycle right so let me just get rid of that stuff there let's say we wanted to go long in this area 
I want to go long here, right? If I went long immediately around this candle, I could have probably taken profit. It's still pumped about 4%, but you know, your target would want to be at least this high here, in my opinion, you know, right? Which it eventually did make, but they wanted to trigger stop losses first. So they want, you know, it's not easy to hold these positions unless you have a wide stop loss in this case. So you could have went off of this low, which could have easily been taken out as well. Place your stop loss right below there. Um, so it's very difficult to just do it in the beginning. There was no real swing failure pattern yet. If you went along there, so we simply waited, you know, we had patience. I wanted confirmation, more confidence in the trade before I took it. So let's, once we saw this, okay, now these are two equal lows. Price came down to 61.59 twice and reacted strongly there. So two equal lows is still a nice thing to go along, but still not a swing failure pattern. It's not what we're looking for. The swing failure pattern was when price briefly traded below those lows and ended up going back up. Okay, so now you have confirmation to go long. You can go long here, have your stop loss below there, right? And then you can trigger, I would trigger these highs or here, which I came right back up to, briefly traded above. So there's constantly SFPs, this current 12 hour, also came up and is still treating the $71 uh, level as resistance. And as you can see, it's come back down. This doesn't close for another four and a half hours, but it's looking like it's not gonna close above that level, right? So let's say this next candle comes up, wicks above, that's a terrible straight line. Let's use the path, uh, that'd be better, right? So let's say this next one, comes up, takes out that high, right? And then ends up actually closing below, then that would be a swing failure pattern again. And then we would wanna take a short, um, at the very least, to take out these lows, right? So I would go short, you know, it does something like that, lower high, and then boom, take profit in this area here or hold with longer. Maybe it takes out this 59 area. I don't think so, because I think Litecoin's still a good coin, but that's just an example. Um, let's see, I'm gonna look at Bitcoin as well. Yeah, great example for Bitcoin here as well. Right, so you can see this high here. For anyone who's short in this area, maybe, you know, at the they have their stop losses where are they most likely to have their stop losses? They're gonna have it above the previous high if they're short, right? So bulls make this little trend, we're going up, right? Keep retapping it and then pumping till we finally make that push. Push is above the 18.1K level and then ends up, that's a disaster of a 12 hour close, right? So it came all the way up here, 18,387. All these forced liquidations, guys who were short are being forced to buy while, you know, major players are filling their shorts in this level. And then end up closing at 17,800, which is roughly 3% lower. And price never went back up to even retest this 18.1 again. So if you'd went short above here and noticed it in the beginning, once it started to wick down and boom, you could just went short here. Add your stop loss above the wick that was just created. And then for your target, you could have taken these previous highs if you're conservative or if you just wanted to hold it here or even these ones down here, right? Either way, that's a risk reward ratio, 7.13. Price came down from that level 
at the lows, if you look at it currently, 8.5%. Right? So that's how we trade SFPs. Obviously, for, you know, high time frame, or we're looking at 12-hour charts, that's going to be much more reliable as opposed to, you know, that's a trade you, you can hold for a while because, you know, you're not using high leverage because it's a, a trade you intend to hold for days, maybe even a week, you know, because that was December 14th. That was about two weeks ago, right? So you can't have high leverage and expect to hold a trade for two weeks unless you're extremely lucky. Um, so always base you know, your leverage and your risk parameters around the time frame that you're choosing. If we're looking at something like the one hour, let's see if we can find one for the one hour. Yeah, so it's kind of like the same thing as you can see here. Let's see. I don't really see any right off the bat, but you guys kind of get the picture. Next, I'm going to go into the slides on what the principles are that we need to understand in order to trade an SFP. I did look after that clip and I did see an example for Ethereum on low time frame. So now we're looking at the one hour chart. As you can see, you know, we had a strong downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. Came up here. Um, we made printed this high around 12.05. Came back down. Then you see here. Price took out this low briefly, ended up closing all the way up at 11.88, and then made its way back up. So this was, you know, again, intense selling pressure, forcing these guys to, maybe they had their stop losses here or here. They triggered them all, filled their own longs, pushed price back up, right? And now we have another one that happened only a few hours ago. Here, price pushed above those highs, making all shorts that were open, you know, trigger their stop losses. It even came up to here, to this high, and that's at 12.07, right? And all they did was fill their shorts, price came back down, next hour they pumped up, closed red, and there you go, right? So that's another example. I think I saw one for looks on 12 hour. This is one that I'm actually currently trading. Yeah. So let me just delete these things here. This was kind of my plan. It's, I don't like the look of this candle currently just because, you know, it's waking up, coming all the way back down. But that's why my plan is I think it's going to come back below my entry. I'm going to probably take some profit here but not close out the entire position. Just be patient, wait to see if price comes back down to this 13.8 level. And if we get a nice reaction and come back above, then that would be my confirmation to actually target these highs. And I'd be more confident in holding the position for a longer period of time if that were to happen. But the SFP I'm looking at um, is right here. So, okay, we see this low that was printed, right? on December 22nd for around 13 8 cents. Price came up, ended up making a lower high again, comes back down, and then briefly trades below the 13.88 level, ends up pumping all the way back up and even closing above this low as well, right? So that was your example of your SFP. I noticed that I had gone long around 14 cents. It's currently at like a little less than 14 and a half. Um, but even that there, does it tell you exactly how much it's pumped from this level? Yeah, 2%. So when you're trading, you know, say you have $30,000 position, 2% is still 600 bucks. Um, you know, my position here was only about 10,000. I just, you know, I wasn't, did it right before bed. So I wasn't trying to be too aggressive, but it's about 200 bucks profit for something as simple as just noticing an SFP pattern, trend reversal, going long, stop loss below that wick, right? And then I'm targeting this high here, which is about a 14% risk reward ratio, 4.6. Okay, so to wrap everything up, um, just make sure everyone understands the principles that we went over. First, 
You want to be able to identify the support and resistance levels, or in this case, the highs or the lows, and this would be the extreme. So you want to go off of the wick, not just the body of the candle, right? Two, we want to identify where stop losses will be triggered, usually above or below those swing highs or swing lows. And then number three, a very important principle to remember is this is different for every time frame. You know, you don't want to be basing all oh, SFP on the five minute. You know what I mean? Um, unless that's a trade you only intend to hold for five minutes. You know what I mean? Um, so I like to go off of, you know, four hour and above. Um, one hour is just simply for a scalp. We did go over some examples for both one hour and 12 hour in this video. I hope they were helpful for everyone to get a you know general understanding of how to trade, where to, where I want to enter, and you know, etc. So that's how we're gonna do it. How to trade it. So now we want to identify the levels. We want to wait for the reaction, or in this case, you know, whether that candle is going to close below you know, that previous high. So maybe the candle closes above it. So that means that there is no swing failure pattern, right? Um, we want to make sure that candle closes wicks above and then closes below the previous high that was made or low, high or low, going in bullish or bearish price action. Um, second, we can be aggressive or conservative. So, you know, if you want to try and knife catch and go long or short into that wick, depending on what chart we're looking at, that would be the aggressive way. Conservative would be to simply wait, wait for the close, wait for the actual, you know, pattern to unfold, show that it's an actual reversal, and then close at the previous swing high or swing low. So you want to take profits at those previous points. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully everyone learned something. Um, my goal was to show you what a swing failure pattern was how to understand the principles and you know how to actually trade it, wait for confirmation, etc. If you feel like you got value from the video, I really appreciate it. If you'd like and subscribe, I try to make as many videos as possible um, to try and help everyday traders just like how I was. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming to this.